Hello everyone, and welcome to the first Bottled Sky devlog of 2024. The team and I have been in a bit of a holiday mode the past month or so, and I'd like to make this video a bit different to the other ones in this series. I want to do a retrospective slash tell a story about where Bottled Sky started and compare that to what it has become by the end of 2023. I started this series on May 28th, 2022. A month or two prior to this, I made a decision to take what I'd learnt so far and restart development on Bottled Sky and document the process via this YouTube series, hence the title of the first video. This title isn't clickbait. I actually understated how long ago this game started development. The title suggests that it started in 2019, but if I look back at the original GitHub repository, first commit was on September 1st, 2017. Back then, the working title was Asteroid Astray. I liked the alliteration, but it's a mouthful to say, so I knew I'd eventually choose another name. The journey of creating Bottled Sky actually begins a few months earlier than that. At the end of July 2017, during the 48-hour Ludum Dare 39 game jam, I made a little game called Lost Cluster. Surprisingly though, the only resemblance this game has with Bottled Sky is that it is also a space-themed game with a 2D top-down perspective and a randomly generated world. Other than that, the gameplay is entirely different. No drilling, no crafting, and not even combat. It was a survival collectathon, I guess? At the time after making it, I didn't see much potential in Lost Cluster. It was a slow and clunky game that in the end was a bit boring, but much to my surprise, many still found this game to be quite relaxing. A few months later, I found myself without a project and plenty of free time. I tried looking for work, but surprisingly, game programmers are not in high demand where I live unless you've been doing it long enough to be considered a senior developer. At the time, I had been learning and making games for nearly 10 years and even had a degree in multiple commercially released games, and yet I couldn't even land a graduate position and was told I needed more experience. Apparently, my portfolio was not impressive enough, so I resolved to make an addition that would catch anyone's eye. I looked through all my Game Jam entries for inspiration, Lost Cluster caught my eye and gave me the idea for Bottled Sky. Pretty much from the beginning, I knew I was going to toss out all of the gameplay, but keep the concept of a randomly generated world because those are the kinds of projects I enjoy making the most. My initial motivation was to make something with fast, fluid, and flashy motion and combat because it was something my portfolio was missing at the time. However, it took a long time before I got around to doing that though. I've always been more enticed to create systems, and all those alliterative adjectives I use to describe the would-be moment-to-moment gameplay, I equate it as polish. All of the conventional game dev wisdom that I had been taught told me that polish is something that happens much later in development. That's not exactly wrong, but it is the reason why it took years before the game finally reached this state. I started with things like the world generation and figuring out how I could efficiently manage memory for a world that is effectively borderless and generates itself as you travel through it. I don't regret it, and it was quite satisfying to finally have those things done, but it took several months and there still wasn't any gameplay. Those features are still the foundation of Bottled Sky and have only gone through small modifications and optimizations ever since, but eventually I knew I had to start working on actual gameplay. The fast, fluid, flashy gameplay. Programming becomes a whole different beast to tackle when you start dealing with a physics engine that also needs to defy the laws of physics in many ways. Progress was slow, and it's hard to track exactly what the timeline of features were from there, mainly because I don't want to dig through years of GitHub commits. By the time I had a character that could engage with world elements like asteroids and have fun combat with challenging enemies, it was already the beginning of 2020. The world around me literally started descending into chaos and life started feeling very different. I started thinking about the broader scope of Bottled Sky. I had the fun, moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, but where was it going? How long do I expect players to enjoy it? That's still not a question I have a solid answer to. I put so much time into it that I didn't want it to be a short experience, especially not shorter than two hours anyway due to Steam's refund policy. I'm vaguely targeting a 10-hour experience just because I need a ballpark figure when explaining my intended scope. But I don't plan on being more specific because I never like it when games are boiled down to just how many hours of content does it have. 
these days, I'm doing everything I can to avoid scope creep, but I do tend to adopt the mentality of it's done when it's ready, rather than it's done when we run out of resources. As long as I plan appropriately with well-defined features based on the resources currently available, I should be able to avoid releasing a half-finished game. Returning to the question of how I want players to engage with the game on an hour-to-hour -hour basis, I started thinking about having a story. Considering that I and everyone around me was going to be locked indoors for the foreseeable future, I wanted to tackle writing my own story. Without going into too many details, it took two years. But after much struggle, I would say I succeeded. However, in the interest of keeping scope minimal, and because I am not confident in my abilities as a writer, it's still up in the air how much of a focus the game will put on traditionally telling a story. Even if the team and I eventually decide to keep story details to a minimum, the world that I spent two years writing about is still being used to direct other essential features and keep everything narratively congruent. In that case, we'd still need to figure out how to entertain players for around 10 hours. While writing the story, I did also make notes about various gameplay features that may appear in the story, but on top of that, I have needed to look at what other games are doing, and that is often what this devlog series is about. Identifying a need for some kind of feature, assessing how other games fill that need, and then using that inspiration to design features that are best suited for Bottled Sky. By now, we have a general idea of what progression systems and features we'll need for the game, but we're still working on more specific details. For example, I've known for a long time that I wanted a crafting system in the game because that reinforces the main character's identity as a scrappy and resourceful inventor slash mechanic, so I built a crafting system, but I haven't planned out all the possible items you might craft. Even the repair kit we have is really just a test item that may or may not go through significant changes in its effect. We have a lot of systems like that that are planned or already built to fit some aspect of the narrative and work with other systems, but the actual content delivered by these systems is still largely missing. I think that will always be an ongoing process, and in our case, I think it's better to keep building from the ground up while constantly testing and reacting to existing content by brainstorming new content that best complements what already exists. The downside to this approach is that it does invite a lot of scope creep, so I try to enforce limitations, such as hypothetically, we will only have 10 unique enemy designs. A limitation like this naturally provides answers to questions like, how many items will we have in the game? If each enemy has about three unique item drops, maybe a common, uncommon, and rare item drop, then that's about 30 items. But then for each design, we might have a couple of ideas for craftable, usable items or upgrades to assist players in fighting or defending against these enemies, so we can add about 20 new items to that count. We're not just looking at crafting though. These resources can be used to fill out content in as many systems as we see fit. What's important is that we stick to specific limitations and only expand them once we've reached those limitations, and then observe how players interact with the game thus far to make an informed decision on whether the game needs more content, and whether we have the resources to make it. Moving back to the story, during the two years I spent writing it, I didn't make any changes to the game itself. After returning to it and seeing the code, it seemed messy and unfamiliar. After writing the story, I had a completely different idea of how I wanted the game to be once completed, and there were existing features that I no longer wanted in the game. Certain features were poorly optimized and didn't run well on lower-end devices. The idea of having to walk around all my old messy code filled me with a sense of dread, and I ultimately decided to just scrap it all and start again, and at the same time document my process via this YouTube series. You might have heard me reference the old version of Bottled Sky many times in previous videos. Well, now that this series has been running for nearly two years and the game is roughly similar in size to the old version, I want to look back and briefly compare the old Bottled Sky with the new one and see what features were kept and what was cut. The first thing to note is that the overall macro level vision for the gameplay hasn't changed. Both versions were always intended to be 2D action games about exploring randomly generated space. The original version, however, had a larger scope that included exploring planets with on-foot movement and combat. There was a decent amount of work put into this concept, but it was later decided that this feature was essentially doubling the scope of the game and wasn't worth the effort. Not all of that was completely scrapped though. We first thought about just cutting the on-foot combat, that way we don't need to manage having two separate combat systems. 
Then we realized it didn't make a whole lot of sense to explore land while staying in your shuttle, so we changed the exploration from planets to something else. That something else hasn't yet been built into the new Bottled Sky, but it is a planned feature still. It will likely have a randomly generated layout that is similar to what I had built for planets. Currently, the intent for this feature is to provide a series of challenges where you have to do combat in an enclosed space, unlike what the player is used to doing in space. Cutscenes. The old version of Bottled Sky already had multiple cutscenes even before I had written the story. I already had a rough idea of how I wanted the game to start from a story perspective, and after writing the story, that hasn't changed. There are multiple reasons why we've not yet bothered to create any cutscenes for the new version yet. Cutscenes are actually quite a lot of work considering it's something you only see once per playthrough. A lot of players don't care about story in games, so you're only catering to a subset of players. And finally, I'd prefer to keep details on the story light until the game is fully released. You won't be seeing them for quite a while, and it's too early to say if you'll see them at all. Gather bots. The old Bottled Sky only had one enemy type so far, and they were quite complex. I've shown off flowcharts for enemies in the new Bottled Sky, so for comparison, here is just a part of what Gatherbots were supposed to do. They will eventually make a return under a new name as they tie into the story, but they won't be as complex as originally planned. Since we're on the topic of enemies, it wasn't originally planned to have so many organic enemies, but at the rate we're going, it looks like most of the enemy roster will be organic. It made more sense to me that space enemies would either be robotic drones or manned spacecraft, but really it doesn't need to make sense, and actually serves as a good opportunity to create a fantasy world unique to Bottled Sky. On that note, I'd like to build out the world with smaller non-aggressive wildlife, but for now that kind of content is considered a stretch goal. The Central Hub both versions of the game have a central hub which is the place you will return to between expeditions out into space. Neither version had very much content built into it yet. The plan in the old version was that the main character owned this large ship and would be able to store their collected resources and upgrade their shuttle here. Then, not long into the story, you would encounter a collective of humans called the Guild, and much of the story would be progressed through interactions with those humans. After rewriting the story, and then beginning the rebuild of Bottled Sky, we decided to merge these gameplay elements together for simplicity. In the new Bottled Sky, the main character only owns the shuttle, and the guild is where you do anything not directly related to exploring space. There are several other minor differences between the two existing builds of the game, but I think I'll cut off the comparisons there. If you've got any questions about Bottled Sky or its development, I'd be happy to answer them in the comment section, or you can join our Discord server. You can find a link to that or any of our social media profiles in the video description. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe to be notified about future videos. Thanks for watching, that's all for now, and I'll see you later.